In this video, we're going to talk about the brand new M5 MacBook Pro and everything that's new with it, as well as what the unboxing experience is like. So if you're a student or a beginner content creator, this might be the best laptop for you to get in 2025. So definitely stick around for this video. We're also going to walk through the entire spec build and how I built out the M5 MacBook Pro and what you should consider when building out your laptop and what decisions you should make when you're checking it out. Now, real quick, before we get started, the last time I mentioned to you guys my subscriber analytics, I mentioned that only 1.4% of people that actually watch my videos are subscribed to the channel. Well, I'm happy to report we've gotten that number up to 1.6% since the last time I mentioned that, which is awesome to see. I would love to see that number continue to grow. So if you're watching this video and you're finding it useful, just take a quick second to subscribe. It's literally free and it really helps out the channel a ton. Okay, now I did put my MacBook back into the box because I already unboxed it off camera for Instagram and TikTok. So those reels are already up, but we're still gonna walk through the experience because everything is pretty much the same. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take off the top lid of the box and the first thing you're gonna see is your MacBook. It's gonna be covered in this paper wrapping which we're obviously gonna go ahead and remove. Now here's where we're gonna get your first glimpse of the brand new M5 MacBook Pro and also you're gonna to get to see the first decision I've made which is the color that I went with which is the space black. Now you only have the option for two colors on the M5 MacBook Pro. You have that traditional silver and you have this amazing space black which I really really like. Now I already had an M2 MacBook MacBook Pro that was in the silver color. So I went with space black because I just figured it would be a nice change of pace and just something refreshing to look at. Something to note if you are a content creator or a student or someone that's gonna be moving around a ton with this laptop, the silver is probably gonna hold up better long term because the scratches won't be as visible. The scratches are much more visible from some examples that I've seen online on the space black. I didn't really care about the scratches because, well, I try to be careful with my laptops. But if you're someone who's in a lot of run and gun situations and you're afraid that you might ding it up a little bit, I would say go with the silver. Otherwise, I think the space black is definitely the better looking between the two. The next thing in the box is this braided cable from Apple and the color of the cable is going to depend on the color of your laptop. So if you got the space black that I just showed you, you're gonna get this black braided cable. If you go with the silver, you're gonna get that more traditional Apple white cable. Personally, I think having a black Apple cable is pretty sick. It's not something you see every day and these braided cables are super high quality. So just another nice benefit of getting the space black. Next up, you're gonna get this information booklet with a bunch of things inside. And I'm just gonna set this aside for a quick second because what's inside, I wanna discuss after this next item. And the next item is going to be this charging brick. Now this is the 70 watt charging brick that comes with your M5 MacBook Pro. You can upgrade to a 96 watt charging brick and that only costs a couple of dollars. And honestly, I didn't do it, but I definitely think that you should. It's fairly inexpensive to add the upgraded charging brick and one of these charging bricks on their own if you don't have any is almost like a hundred bucks so it just makes sense right off the bat to have the more expensive charging brick in Canada it's like an additional like $16 or something like that I'll obviously have the real spec built out in this video so you can see exactly how much it costs in US dollars but I think it's a no-brainer and just having the ability to charge your laptop faster for a couple of extra bucks is really really convenient okay now the reason I wanted to come back to that documentation box later is that generally there's only some documentation in there but if you go ahead and purchase the nano texture display which is something that I've done in my configuration you're also gonna get this Apple microfiber cloth and this is a pretty big decision to make when you're going through your spec and your build out it does cost an additional 150 US dollars but I think the nano texture display is 100% mandatory for me at least on every single Apple device moving forward that has that option it's a total and absolute game changer and something that you should consider when you're building out your MacBook, especially if you're a student or a content creator who's going to be in a ton of different lighting scenarios throughout the day. Maybe you're going from class to class or you're working outside. The nano texture display works incredibly well at cutting glare. Now, some people do complain that it lowers some kind of brightness or sharpness. Now, I haven't really noticed that in my displays when testing out the nano texture display, and I think it's 100% worth it. And real quick, just to show you the difference between the two displays here, I have my M2 MacBook Pro, which has Apple standard display, and my key light is right in front of me, so you can 
can see that all the glare and reflections from the light are there. But then on the other hand, when you see the new M5 MacBook Pro with the nano texture display, you can see how it's just absolutely killing the glare and the reflections from the key light. And you can pretty much see your entire screen quite clearly. Okay, so that's it for everything that's inside the box. The other two adjustments that I made at checkout were for RAM and the SSD storage. So let's start with RAM. The base RAM on this laptop is 16 gigs. I did upgrade to the 32 gigs of RAM because I do a lot of video work and I just need that extra RAM. So if you're someone who's planning to do a lot of creative or heavy lifting video work, that's something that you should consider as well. And for the first time ever on a 14 inch MacBook Pro, Apple is allowing us to have a four terabyte SSD of storage. And obviously that's the option that I went with, but just a word of caution, it is extremely expensive to pick this option. It almost doubles the cost of the entire laptop. So if budget is a concern, I would definitely avoid this. Personally, I think having the extra storage is really, really nice, especially if you're working as a content creator, you're gonna have a lot of large video files and the access to this SSD has also been improved. So the speed at which the laptop can read it, which is really, really nice to see because you can access your files so much quicker. And that's really evident so far in my tests in Final Cut Pro. But again, like I said, this is a very, very expensive option. So if you are on a budget, I would try and at least go up to the one terabyte option. One terabyte will serve you incredibly, incredibly well well and it's not as expensive as it is to add on the other memory options like the two terabyte or the four terabyte i would definitely just go with the one terabyte if you're on a budget and you're trying to stretch yourself it is still plenty of room now with the base m5 you can see a massive upgrade in both gaming as well as ai based workflow so if you're a student and use chat gpt a ton to help you study or maybe you're using the shortcuts app on your macbook with ai based workflows or maybe you use siri a ton all that stuff is going to be way faster Faster. Apple is claiming that it's going to be up to three and a half times faster. And honestly, I kind of see it. I use Chad GPT for a ton of things. I also use AI in other workflows like video editing, like using magic masks and things like that. And things are significantly faster. And I'm coming from an M2 Pro MacBook. Apple is also claiming up to 1.6 times faster performance while gaming. And this is awesome to see because in the past, if you wanted to game on a MacBook, that wasn't really possible since we saw the introduction of the M series chip. So it's finally great to see Apple catching up in the gaming department because in the past you would either need a PC to game and a MacBook for creative stuff or if you're a student or you're on a budget you could only pick one and if gaming was really important to you you had to go with the PC well I'm happy to report you can do all that on your MacBook now I've tried playing League of Legends on this I've seen cyberpunk run on this with a PlayStation controller and it just looks phenomenal so that's really really nice to see here that you have more options for what you can do with your MacBook this year and the other big thing that Apple is claiming is up to 24 hours of battery life. Now, I obviously haven't gotten the chance to test this out, but I will be filming a day in the life or a week in the life episode with this device. So if you've seen my other episodes with other devices like the iPhone 17 Pro Max and other devices that I've done with the day in the life, you're going to want to stick around for that and definitely subscribe to the channel. I think this one's going to be a really fun one. Now, really quick, let's also talk about setup because I transferred all my data from my M2 MacBook Pro to my new M5 MacBook Pro and set it up exactly the same within really like 30 minutes. It was incredibly, incredibly quick. And I did that using Time Machine. So what you, what you wanna grab is you wanna get some kind of SSD. I used a two terabyte Angel Bird SSD. This video is not sponsored by Angel Bird. I've just been testing out their SSD for a while and they might be the best in the game. I don't wanna make any kind of claims, but it is blazing fast, incredibly small, and it doesn't overheat. But anyways, I just plugged that into my M2 Pro MacBook Pro. I ran a Time Machine backup. And then when I opened up my new M5, uh, MacBook Pro, there was an option to restore the device using Time Machine, which is exactly what I did. And it set it up really, really fast. It upgraded to the latest iOS or whatever, or Mac OS really, really fast. And my device was set up exactly the same as my old M2 MacBook Pro. So I was able to pick up exactly where I left off. This is an amazing feature. This was actually my first time using Time Machine. I've never done it before. And I think if you're gonna set up a new MacBook, that's the only way to do it. Now, real quick, the last thing I wanna talk about is that your brand new MacBook is gonna come installed with Mac OS. S26 Tahoe, which is the latest Mac OS. And this adapts the same liquid glass design philosophy as iOS 26. So personally, I have an iPhone 17 Pro Max and I've customized it to my liking. I've used the new liquid glass and the new icons and made everything look really nice to my own liking and my own preference. And you can do the exact same thing with Mac OS 26 Tahoe. You can see that 
in the widgets, the dock, the finder windows, the icons, really everywhere in the entire OS. You can see that Lick of Glass is really implemented and designed really well and thought through. And so if you're coming from something like an iPhone or a MacBook, everything is really seamless. It all feels like it's part of the same ecosystem. And from a design and aesthetic perspective, that's just really, really nice to see. Now, other than the things that I mentioned, everything is pretty much the same between this new M5 MacBook Pro and my M2 MacBook Pro, the weight, the design, the size, the screen, the ports, literally everything is the same. So if you're someone that has something like an M3 Pro, M4 Pro, any of the ultra chips, you're not gonna really notice a performance difference. And I would probably skip the M5 MacBook Pro. This is probably not for you. But if you're somebody that's on an older M baseline chip, or if you're someone that doesn't have any kind of MacBook and you're looking to get your first MacBook and you're a content creator or a student, I think this is the perfect, perfect place to start. This is an incredibly powerful device that's gonna serve you for years and years to come. Anyways, that's it for my video. Hopefully you guys found this useful and you found what you were looking for. I'll see you on the next one. And until then, keep creating.